I just want to thank everybody for joining us uh, either this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. And, um, you know, perhaps you have a glass of your favorite champagne, some crackers, a spoonful of caviar uh, there next to you. We can do that in these Zoom meetings. Um, there's many segments of travel in the cruise industry. Uh, you've got contemporary adventure cruising, uh, premium cruising, river cruising. Today, we're going to be discussing luxury cruising. And this is with the leader in that segment, Seaborne Cruise Lines. Uh, but first, uh, we'll have some introductions and then uh, some housekeeping to take care of. Uh, I'm Edward Infanti. I'm a cruise specialist with Cruise Experts Travel. Um, I've been working with Cruise Experts Travel for the last 15 years and, and in the business for a few more than that. Uh, so I'm quite familiar with cruising as well as luxury cruising. I'd like to experience more luxury cruising as I'm sure all of you would, but uh, uh, at this point, uh, we just have to do it virtually. Uh, Tom Steer is joining us. He's the business development manager for Seaborn. And then Annabelle Seo, uh, she's our director of sales for Merit Travel and Cruise Experts Travel. And uh, she will be handling our chat function today. Uh, so thank you, Annabelle. Nice so to just, see so many people have joined us. So welcome everybody. Yeah, welcome. Uh, just some housekeeping. Everybody has been placed on mute. If you aren't on mute, if you could do so, um, the feedback is a, is a little bit, um, uh, I guess, uh, distracting, if you will. Um, in order to do that, you can uh, find, you see that bar, that uh, black bar there on the, on the uh, screen. Uh, in order to find that, just uh, hover your mouse over the bottom of your webpage and it should pop up, that bar should pop up. The mute button is located on the lower left. You can just click on that. Um, in order to see your shining faces, uh, you can click on the stop video uh, icon. If you, are, uh, if you are shy, you can click on it to, uh, to remove yourself from the video. And then over to the right, uh, there's a chat function. And um, we'll be using that later on for a couple of uh, reasons. Uh, we're gonna do a presentation. If you have questions, uh, please put them uh, to us using that chat function. So just click on it and uh, a little screen will open up to the right and you can type your message in there to us. Uh, we'll be monitoring questions. And again, we'll address them at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, we're also gonna do a couple quizzes and you can answer the questions using the chat uh, function, okay? Uh, just a little bit about us, uh, Merit Travel and Cruise Experts. We're a full service travel company um, and we do exceptional travel experiences, uh, adventure travel, hosted trips, uh, cruises, extended stays, golf and ski weekends, uh, anything really you can dream of. Our retail locations, we have them across the country. They are closed because of COVID, uh, but you can still talk to uh, over 100 travel consultants, uh, either by phone or by email. Yeah. And um, we have a new bra uh, brand new website that we're launching, www.cruises.ca. And uh, you can get more information about cruising on that website. We'll go to the next screen here. Uh, just a little bit about travel insurance. Thanks, Tom. Uh, so obviously travel insurance is very important for any type of travel adventure you might plan. Uh, Merit Travel and Cruise Experts uses Allianz Travel, or Allianz Insurance, I should say, uh, for your travel insurance needs, whether it's medical insurance for leaving the country, trip cancellation or interruption. Uh, Allianz has also introduced uh, a new insurance for COVID coverage if you are traveling. Uh, so you can speak to your travel advisor about that and get the details on that package. We have some more virtual experiences coming up. Uh, November 26th, we're talking about wildlife tours in Africa, the Jane Goodall collection uh, with G Adventures. On December the 8th, uh, you don't have to be a skier to go to a ski resort. I guess we're going to be talking about Apres Ski and spas at ski resorts. Uh, and maybe you're going to decide to uh, hit the slopes as well, but that's December the 8th. And then in the new year, uh, we're featuring a uh, discussion on Mediterranean and Baltic cruising with Oceana Cruises. So, um, Seaborn's origins and cruises started over 30 years ago with three yacht-like vessels. 
and has evolved into a worldwide leader in luxury travel. We'll talk more about the fleet and the onboard experience, but believe me when I say this, when you travel with Seaborn, you will not lack for anything on your vacation. We're pleased today to have Tom Steer, Business Development Manager, responsible for Western Canada for both Seaborn and Holland American Line. Tom started in the cruise industry working aboard ships in 2000 and spent time in various roles on several cruise lines. To say that Tom has seen it all from a cruise perspective would be an understatement. His final role at sea allowed him to travel the world working as a future cruise consultant aboard several of the Hall America ships. He's been in his current role for Seaborn and Hall in America for the last six years and a wonderful partner to our uh, travel agency during that time. I want to warmly welcome Tom to our discussion today. Take it away, Thank Tom. you, Edward. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. I really appreciate that. Well, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I know uh, many of you are joining us from uh, across the country and some of you uh, also in the US. So thanks for joining. I really appreciate you taking a little bit of time out of your day to join us to hear a little bit about Seaborn or perhaps even get a refresher on Seaborn, as I know so many of you have already traveled Seaborn. Um, and as Edward says, you know, pour yourself, whether it's a, a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, a, a dish of caviar, a chips, whatever it is. So relax, enjoy yourselves. We're going to make this fun and there's going to be some uh, questions along the way, some quizzes along the way. So, um, and as Edward said, I just want to um, reinforce, put those questions in the chat box and we will address them at the end. So if we haven't answered your question yet, don't worry, we're going to try and get to them at the end. So before we start talking about all that fantastic stuff that Seaborn has to offer, I do want to address something very important, um, the elephant in the room, so to speak, um, and that is what we're doing in terms of our return to sale and you know health and safety protocols. It's a, a burning question for many. Um, so I, I, I don't have a lot to share with you this morning. We do have information available on our, um, uh, our Seaborn website. And speak if you if you are ever curious to find out what the latest updates are um, regarding our return to sale plans and these protocols, reach out to your merit travel advisor or your cruise experts travel advisor, and they will be able to provide you with the latest info. But to give you a sense of what we're doing, we're working um, through uh, consistently, kind of around the clock, with the CDC, the WHO, uh, the Clear. Uh, cruise lines organization, the world's leading cruise line organization, to all be in lockstep. Um, and as we um, finesse these protocols and procedures, we're making them available. So you will find them available on the Seaborn website. You will see them. There's a page called Traveling uh, and Staying Healthy, and we update them as we get concrete protocols and concrete uh, procedures that we, we um, have finalized, we'll be sharing. What we don't want to do is bombard you with a lot of information that we're going to have to update, um, adjust and walk back. We want to give you the, the final version so you can trust um, uh, in, in what we're sharing. But the information that we have is always there for you, but do reach out to the teams and they can provide you with, with the, the latest uh, info. So let's talk about Seaborn. Before I get into, get into kind of the nuts and bolts of Seaborn, as it were, and those Seaborn differences, um, I would like to talk about kind of luxury in general, because Seaborn is known as the finest ultra luxury line. Um, and it's often said these days, you do hear a lot about luxury travel. Um, and generally what you hear is that these days, um, luxury is more about the experience than material items. That is, that is often said, um, and it is true. Um, it's been widely observed throughout the generations these days, as we are here in 2020, over the last few years, people spend money on luxury experiences more so than they do on luxury items. However, when you're having a luxury cruise experience, you are interacting with the environment around you. That is the ship itself, the interior, the exterior. So you do need to know what that luxury feels like you know because you're going to touch see feel that luxury and interact with that environment so to set the scene with seaborn the fleet itself makes a big difference to begin with we have have a lovely fleet of five ships and these ships are all very consistent in size they're all very modern they're all built recently and they're consistent in size which is different to a lot of what you would have seen perhaps with luxury cruise lines 
where you'll get a wide variation kind of in in the size of the ships, larger ships, smaller ships, newer ships, older ships that have been refurbished. With Seaborne, they're all new, size is very consistent, and that really does enable us to, to kind of uh, uh, apply the same um, programming and the same feel are kind of consistent throughout the fleet. Um, the, this, the size of the fleet or the size of each of these ships is essentially um, uh, uh, 360 guests or so on, on three of them. Two of the sisters are ever so slightly larger. They have one extra deck area, which pushes it up to, to 600 guests. So between 230 and 300 suites. Um, that is what you'll see with the Seaborne fleet. Um, but in terms of how Seaborne feels inside, because as I say, luxury, you're going to experience it, but you're going to, you're going to interact with the, 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 the environment around you. Um, I'll tell you how Seaborne doesn't feel. When you're on a Seaborne ship, it doesn't feel stuffy or stodgy or snobby or snooty, whatever word you want to use. Um, it's not that kind of formal luxury where you feel maybe a bit out of place. You know, you're sitting on the edge of the chair. You feel that, you know, it's not, not welcoming. Seaborne is so welcoming. It feels like a home away from home, like kind of a country club atmosphere. Um, but every fixture and fitting and, you know, cushion, everything is just uh perfect um absolutely kind of ex exquisite in that respect the, the attention to detail is, is utmost but it just feels so warm and welcoming um it isn't uh like you find in many kind of luxury hotel environments um kind of that cold kind of too modern feel where you feel maybe it's a little bit kind of could, feels a bit too cold in that respect seaborne's very warm and welcoming um and uh edward i know you've you've experienced seaborne and seaborne square especially which kind of the hub of kind of the the that 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 uh that space uh in regards to the interior of seaborne and i know you have a few things you wanted to share on that yes that's right i mean i love that seaborne square area it's located at the back of the ship on deck seven and it, to describe it, it's kind of a combination of uh, cafe, deli, library. Uh, there's both indoor and outdoor area at the square. And uh, I find it to be like a great place uh, for conversation, like with other, other guests, uh, just reading a book or what have you, or just people watching, really. It's, uh, it seems to be sort of, like you said, a hub of activity uh, on the ship. And uh, certainly during those... Uh, uh, in climate days, maybe if you're up in Alaska, a uh, nice place to hang out and read or just kind of see the uh, scenery uh, going past you. Um, anyways, I want to talk, uh, I, I want to uh, launch a, a quiz for everybody uh, here participating. Um, so if you could, if you could locate your chat function at the bottom of the page or screen, um, we're going to be uh, giving away a prize. It's a hundred dollar shipboard credit on your next Seaborne cruise. When you reserve your Seaborne cruise, uh, you will, we will be providing you with $100 in spending money on board the ship for the first person who answers this question. And it's, uh, it's a multiple choice question. So you just wanna answer A, B, or C in the chat box. So the question is, which of the following will you find on a Seaborne ship? Uh, a, a jumble water slide, uh, B, a water sports platform, or C, a rock climbing wall. So A, B, or C, just a quick, uh, looks like we've got quite a few people who've answered already. Thank you very much. The correct answer is B, uh, the marina or water sports platform. And that's located at the stern of the ship or, or the back of the ship uh, on deck three. So. Um, Thank you very much for answering. And uh, we will have some more quizzes later on. So, you know, don't be discouraged if you haven't won anything. And Annabelle will get in touch with you if uh, if you have- In a private, I'm gonna reach out to you in a private chat just to confirm your email address. So Bernie and Maureen, uh, just look for that message in two seconds. Fantastic. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about just briefly in terms of service and, and luxury, and of course, you know, uh, luxury cruising is defined by a lot of things. Uh, we talk about space ratios, being, meaning the amount of space for each passenger, and that reflects itself in the size of cabins, uh, how, how spacious the dining room is, you know, things like that. Um, it also talks about, you know, uh, crew to passenger ratio. So the more crew on board, of course, it leads to 
uh, you know, better service, presumably, you know, on, on Seaborne, the, the passenger crew ratio is one to one or very close to that, meaning that each passenger has a separate crew member almost looking after them, okay? But really what, what defines luxury are the smaller touches. And, and these are what you would experience on Seaborne. It's like ordering uh, room service. And, you know, on a contemporary cruise line, when you order room service, uh, your form might tell you that it's going to arrive sometime between 7 and 7.30. Well, on Seaborne, you're going to order room service for 7.15, and it's going to arrive at 7.15. And when it gets to your, your cabin, your butler will, will make up your table and put a cloth on your table, and you'll be served with, you know, fine china and cutlery. Um, and the items that you ordered that were hot are hot. And the items that you ordered that were supposed to be cold are cold. And you know, this is the thing that defines, uh, one of the small things that defines luxury. Um, also, dinner service. If you want to have dinner service in your room, it can be served to you course by course. Your butler will come in, prepare the table or your, your, your balcony if you have one, and um, you'll be able to enjoy a course by course dinner. Whatever is on the menu that night, you can order. Uh, so, again, this is not a limited room service that you have on a contemporary cruise line. This is a full service uh, room service that you can order uh, from the dining room. Um, one of the stories I like to relate about, uh, you know, Seaborne, uh, I, I have, a, have from a client, uh, they were sailing with Seaborne and uh, they were talking to a fellow passenger in the hallway, just in general about flowers. And the client mentioned to, uh, to her friend or the other passenger that she really liked lilies. And, you know, they just kind of had this conversation, never really thought much of it. And a couple of days later, uh, she got back from a shore excursion to her room and there was a vase on the desk with a bunch of lilies. And there was a card from her cabin steward who, or her butler who talked about how wonderful it was to look after her and hope she was enjoying the holiday and that sort of thing. And it's, it's these small uh, touches, they call them seaborne moments uh, that really define, you know, what it is to travel in a luxury environment. And the, the crew and the, uh, the, the staff are, are really trying hard to make these moments happen uh, and make you feel special about your trip and, and also, uh, you know, enjoying your vacation. So these are the things that I think from the standpoint of luxury is what defines seaborne. That's, that's so true, Edward, what you said, the small touches, you know, the sum of the parts of all of those small touches, it, yeah, it's kind of immeasurable. Um, and that's that's what keeps our, our, our guests coming back and back time and time again. Um, regarding the, 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 the front of house service staff, um, we select our service staff from some of the finest hotels and the hotelier colleges and, and institutes um, throughout the world. Primarily our service staff uh, generally uh, are from Western Europe and, and South Africa. Um, but the team on board, um, yeah, they're, they're really the ones who uh, in the front of house win hearts and minds, cruise after cruise and keep our guests coming back time and time again. I just want to mention um, something about voyages quickly. The fact that you'll see with Seaborn, we often say our voyages are curated. Um, it's a fancy word, but what, what it actually means for us is that they are built from scratch, from the ground up, because our ships are smaller. Um, they're very nimble, they're very agile. So it means we can design our own itineraries. We don't have to look what other cruise lines are doing and just kind of tweak it a little bit. We, we design our own sailings. A great example of this is Alaska. So we returned to Alaska after say 15 years or so where we hadn't sailed in Alaska. We started um, or returned to Alaska three years ago um, and it's been a phenomenal success. Um, Seaborn has some uh, a sister line and kind of a cousin's line within the corporate kind of family um, that sail to Alaska that have phenomenal Alaska cruises, great Alaska cruises. And Seaborn could have easily have just used what they do and made a few tweaks and a, a few adjustments. It would have been easy. It would have been, you know, very simple, cost effective. Seaborn didn't do that. What we did instead was our deployment team, our deployment director spent uh, a, an extended period of time, many months at, at sea level, sailing those narrow channels and uh, waterways and passages in Alaska and the inside passage to design an itinerary specifically 
for a seaborne vessel, the size of vessel, the, the, the channels we can navigate, the ports we can get into, um, the, the, the excursions that that would enable. So that the itinerary is built from the ground up. And when we show you those itineraries, which we will in a short while, you'll see the difference. And that's, that applies to seaborne itineraries across the board. So many folks find seaborne purely on the, fa on the basis of these itineraries. They're, they, they are not like uh, or they're unlike, I should say, uh, other lines operating in similar destinations. So more on that in a, in a short while. I just want to show you an interior of one of the suites. All our, all our rooms on board are suites. We call them actually oceanfront suites. Now, many of you who cruise will know uh, the term ocean view. That's kind of the standard term in the cruise world to say you have a window or a balcony. It's ocean view. But we actually have to say oceanfront because so many um, uh, uh, guests of Seabourne um, find us through luxury networks they may not have cruised before they just have luxury land vacation experience or stayed in luxury resorts so if you tell someone who's never cruised who stays in luxury resorts you're going to have an ocean ocean view that could be ambiguous it could be a peekaboo view of the ocean so that's why we say ocean front because so many folks are finding seaborne and, and they find themselves on a ship and suddenly become a cruiser and having never cruised before. Um, so I always find that, that that interesting because it just goes to show how diverse the type of individuals are, are, are on board ship. Now, the uh, uh, beverages on board, uh, premium spirits, fine wines, uh, et cetera, are complimentary. They're not, it's not just a case of being served at lunch or just at dinner. They are uh, complimentary uh, throughout the ship in your in-suite bar which can be pre-stocked with your um, requests prior to sailing when you work with your, 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 your merit travel or, or cruise experts travel advisor that can be pre-stocked or you can request whichever particular um, uh, beverage you're partial to to be stocked once you're on board ship. But it's included throughout the cruise, every venue, wherever you are. Now, um, we have a hostess program on board. Our hostess uh, program uh, is, is fantastic. Our hostesses will do everything from pour the welcome champagne, which is our, we serve Montedon champagne uh, throughout the ship. They'll pour that welcome champagne. They'll draw a bath for you with those uh, petals. They'll come around um, regularly with a selection of soaps, whichever soap you're in the mood for that day, you know, something uh, kind of citrusy or oatmeal-y, whatever it may be. Um, so, uh, that really kind of galvanizes that kind of experience and relationship with the staff on board, having that kind of uh, kind of um, non-intrusive, but still kind of always there, um, a kind of natural understanding and relationship where you, you, you build with the, with the hostesses. It, it really does galvanize the whole experience. Now, part and parcel of this is the fact that tipping is neither required nor expected. That is something very easy to get used to. And when you start to break down the fare, let's say you have um, a quote from, from your cruise experts travel or merit travel advisor on a seaborne sailing, you start to break, break out some of these inclusions, the fact that fine wines and, 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 and spirits and beverages are included, the fact there's no gratuities needed, you start to break out some of these costs. You start to see that that, that price point, that fare is actually kind of on par, close to it, often below than the, the contemporary and premium cruise lines, those mega ships out there. So, so luxury isn't a stretch when you start to understand those, those inclusions. Now, I, I shared this shot because I think it just shows that beautiful open deck space, especially this time of year when it's either snowy outside or rainy and a, a bit chilly. It's, it's wonderful to think of a wonderful uh, kind of alfresco dinner under the stars in the Mediterranean or the Caribbean. And this is what it looks and feels like. It's often said that Seabourn is one of the finest luxury resorts in the world. It just happens to be at sea. Now, with dining in mind, something that I, I always like to mention when we talk about the dining in, on Seabourn is our chef partnership. Now, many cruise lines have a, a partnered chef. They have a chef they're associated with, maybe someone you know from the TV, you know, a name that people are familiar with, which is a fun idea. Um, with Seabourn, we have a partnership with, let's say you could call him the chef's chef. If you took all those other kind of celebrity chefs associated with other cruise lines, got them in a room candidly and asked them, who, who do they aspire to? Who do they look up to? Who's their role model kind of in the culinary world. I'm sure many of them would name this gentleman, Thomas Keller. Thomas Keller not only oversees uh, the dining experience on board, 
and has input kind of in a creative kind of energy that he that he um, that he gives to all of the the entire dining experience. But he actually has his own project on Seaborn, his own uh, restaurant, which is called the Thomas Keller Grill. Now, the Thomas Keller Grill is uh, on every ship in the fleet. But the reason uh, this is this is just such an amazing thing to be able to experience at sea is because, and some of you may be unfamiliar with him, um, he's known for a number of restaurants restaurants on land. Uh, he has Per Se in New York, French Laundry in California, in Napa. And that restaurant, French Laundry in Napa, actually has uh, kind of around a three to six month wait list. When you finally dine there, you're going to walk out with paying about $400 per head kind of cover charge US before wine is poured. Um, and I'm sure you can imagine the wine list. With Seaborn, you get to have that reservation in the Thomas Keller Grill. That's included in the fare. If it's a longer cruise, you'll be able to have more than one reservation. Um, wine is poured complimentary, unless you want to look at Thomas Keller's kind of special, his own selection of wines, but otherwise you can have those fabulous Seaborn wines poured. There's no, you don't have to wait three to six months. You haven't had to pay $400 US. It's all included. Again, this is just part of the value of Seaborn. So I always like to say to, uh, to foodie friends and colleagues and folks um, in the part of the world where I am, in, I'm in the west coast of Canada, I'm in the Vancouver area. I love to say, uh, have you heard about the new Thomas Keller restaurant in Vancouver? And when they start to take me to task and say, nope, there is no Thomas Keller restaurant in Vancouver and there is in New York, uh, California, et cetera, et cetera. I say, well, in fact, there is on the Seaborn Sojourn every 14 days during the summer months um, with the Thomas Keller Grill. So I can't um, you know, overstate his importance enough. The one quote I, I will, one, one more thing I will say is, I think this resonates the most is, he, he's won an, uh, the award for best restaurant in the world several times for French Laundry in California. But the late great Anthony Bourdain once said, French Laundry is the best restaurant in the world, period. And accolades and um, praise doesn't get any higher than that. So that, that's 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 what all I'll say uh, about Thomas Keller because I, I I've spoken enough about him. But he oversees the 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 dining across the board around the ship, and everything is cooked a la minute, meaning we don't have that kind of conveyor belt. All the dishes being made at the same time. Every dish um, is prepared individually. Uh, and Edward, I know you've had some, some fabulous experiences yourself with with Seaborn and and kind of this kind of uh kind of luxury experience in terms of dining on small ships yeah exactly i mean uh, dining is clearly one of the more uh, important aspects of cruising and vacations in general i would say just talking to clients uh in terms of why they make decisions on where to go and and, and who to travel with um you know and seaborne does raise it up a couple of notches uh clearly uh, one of the things that i really like about this which is not really well known uh fact is that seaborne menus don't repeat themselves for 21 days, which is really important if you have somebody who is traveling on a longer journey, you know, 10, 14, 20 days, uh, they're going to see something different every day on their voyage. On a contemporary line, those menus repeat every week. So, you know, again, it's not, I mean, you're, you're going to be well fed on a contemporary line for sure, but to have something interesting and inviting on the menu each and every day is fantastic. But wait a second. If you haven't had lamb and it's day five, no problem. Just talk to your maitre d' and just say to them, look, I really have a hankering for rack of lamb. Um, I like it prepared this way. And 24 hours notice, it'll be uh, on your plate the next day. And again, this is another aspect of luxury that you can really sort of, uh, you know, customize the vacation to make it your own. And Seaborn with, will do these sorts of things with a huge smile on their face. They just love to make people happy and and to and and to and they have the ability to do so because of, again the nature of the product is so small and intimate. Fantastic, yeah, that that's uh, that that's so true. Uh, any requests? Uh, and I've got some. So I'm not going to share them with you now. It would take too much time. But some wonderful stories that I've I've um, I've had shared with me from from uh, from from guests sailing aboard where those kind of requests were met um, and and you know they were you know, uh, f delivered way over the the, uh, the kind of level they were expecting and, and really knocked it out of the park. Um, this shot, by the way, this is the aft end of the ship, which is the aft of the colonnade. The colonnade is essentially um, 
it's it, it's like a kind of Seaborn's version of what you would call a Lido buffet, but it's partial um, self-service buffet, but there's also table service. It feels casual, but also in the evenings, you know, the, the tables are um, dressed, so with silverware, with glassware, wonderful table service, those fine wines are poured. So it feels casual. If you don't want to go to the restaurant, you know, maybe it's a formal night, you don't want to do that, um, or you want to eat in the aft area where it's fresco outside, it's just a wonderful, casual, casual, but kind of still feels a little bit special and exclusive as well. So it's a wonderful option. So I'm going to just talk to you about a couple of other uh, aspects of, of what you find on board. We've talked about luxury itself. We talked about the food. Health and fitness on board is, is um, a big part of Seaborn, a great opportunity to spend some time to kind of rejuvenate and reinvigorate yourself, whether that's through the the fitness center or the spa program our spa programs in partnership with dr andrew Weil. many of you may be familiar with him he's almost like a, a godfather in the kind of health and wellness world world the same way uh thomas keller is in the in the culinary world um he's been around for kind of 30 40 years uh, leading the pack when it comes to that kind of holistic approach to to kind of wellness and he has designed our spa program he often sails there's certain sailings that he is featured on he'll be sailing to um, the same goes for this gentleman who plays a big part in our entertainment. We have a show curated uh, and created especially for Seaborn by Sir Tim Rice. Now, if you're thinking, I know that name, what's Tim Rice known for? Well, you think of those Broadway and West End musicals, you know, Evita, Lion King, Joseph, to name but a few. All of those songs, those hit songs that you just know as soon as you hear the first few bars, he penned them all. That is that he's the gentleman responsible for those. And he creates his own show um, with his kind of uh, um, pre-recorded interludes and our, our performers deliver that show in a really spacious lounge. That's the great thing about Seaborn ships because they were built from scratch with the idea of, of how can we kind of redefine luxury cruising. We have really um, spacious areas and a, a quite a large lounge considering you know, the small intimate size of our ships. And uh, something that's so important to Seaborn, because we're sailing to all seven continents, is our ongoing commitment to environmental stewardship. Um, that plays a big part in, in what we do. Our, our partnership with UNESCO when we're sailing to, to ports that have those UNESCO World Heritage sites on offer with shore excursions, but it is a huge part of what we do. Um, before we talk about any particular destination, the, I guess the, not the jewel in the crown, but one aspect of the Seaborn experience that I feel sets us apart, kind of head and shoulders above the rest, is what we call the Ventures Program. Now, um, Edward earlier in the quiz alluded to the water sports marina. Um, that's one aspect of what we what we can do, you know, um, and engage directly with the 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 ocean and the environment around us. We do that when we're in a wonderful, warm, secluded bay or private area that we'll, we'll find in the Mediterranean or in the Caribbean and everyone can, you know, enjoy the, 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 the water sports and, and, and just relax directly and, 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 and kind of enter the water directly from the ship. But we do that in kind of a, 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 a kind of a much more of a, uh, an elevated way, a, a larger scale when we're sailing to places like Antarctica, Alaska, throughout Australasia and Asia, um, parts of Europe, also Northern Europe, Greenland, Iceland, we have something called the Ventures Program. And what this is in a nutshell is our ability to deploy Zodiacs directly from the ship and kayaks, groups of kayaks directly from the ship. Now, what happens is these are like regular paid shore excursions. On average, just so you know, they run around $250. Um, it's good, kind of US is an average cost. Then many times they will sell out. Um, the kayaks are groups of 12 or 13, the Zodiacs are groups of around 12, and the kayaks are piloted by our Ventures team. Now, the Ventures team are not just experts in deploying those craft and piloting those craft, they're also in their own right oceanographers, ge uh, geologists, marine biologists. They are professionals in the areas of expertise, and they hold workshops on board. Um, show you kind of how the equipment works. They'll have set, hold seminars. They'll be around the ship, you know, having lunch and dinner. You get to spend time socially with them, have a coffee or a drink in the evening. They're around the ship. You get to know them. And then they're taking you out on the kayaks, on the Zodiac, 
so you don't feel like you've you've left the ship and you've gone to a third party operator you're still with the crew you're still you're still with your family on board in that respect so um the the kayaks are a small group a group of 12 a wonderful way to get kind of up close and personal with nature that that visceral kind of raw experience um the same way for the zodiacs and the zodiacs i i i um i've often heard that guests and i've uh, anecdotally many times from guests who have sailed that that they've got on board the ship they they book seaborne just for their itinerary and the cruise experience itself without really thinking about the, the ventures program or the zodiacs they didn't think they would be taking part in that but they see them deployed they uh, then maybe chat to some fellow guests at dinner who tell them about their experiences and they maybe have a casual coffee or chat with the ventures team and then they try it they finally book one of those ventures um excursions on the zodiac and then they're hooked. The next port they're doing one, the other next port, the next port, because it's very safe, very sturdy. They're the same craft the Navy SEALs use. We only deploy them when the weather is absolutely perfect. So we never take any risks. Um, but it's just a fabulous way, as I say, to get up close and personal with nature, see coastlines, um, areas of interest, areas of natural beauty um, from a different perspective. And you're not going to a third party operator. We're not, we're not docking, busing you to uh, an, an operator station who's taking you out on a separate vessel. It's all, it's all flows with the with the Seaborne program start to finish. And I think that what makes this stand out in the industry is you've got this raw kind of experience, almost like an expedition experience, but m lower impact for sure. So it's not that kind of full blown expedition experience, but you're getting that taste of expedition, and then you step back on board the vessel and you've got a glass of Montedon champagne in your hand, or you're able to go back to your suite and refresh yourself in that marble five, five fixture bathroom suite um, and enjoy all those wonderful small touches uh, and then go for a Thomas Keller uh, dinner that evening. That world of luxury and that level of kind of exploration of the natural world, they, they don't exist uh, really outside of Seabourn. If you hear about someone who's gone kayaking in the Amazon, you assume they've had to go, you know, in some type of kind of trekking experience. Nothing wrong with that. With Seaborn, you go straight from the ship, you're kayaking, then straight back on the ship and you're in the hot tub sipping a glass of Montedon champagne. Those two worlds work together so well. Anyway, the Ventures program plays a big part in what we do, um, but we do cover all seven continents with our cruises overall. Um, and a big part of, of, of why Seaborn has become so popular over the years is because of that small ship um ability to get into to ports that other ships wouldn't get into and i know edward you've had a lot of experiences with that and you've had many clients come to you uh, and, and can continue to book seaborne for that very very reason well clearly yeah i mean uh, you know i mentioned before dining was an important component of people's choices in, in travel but destination for cruising is definitely number one um and of course you know, the, the advantage of Seabourn is you're going to go to a destination, you're going to see the main ports like Santorini and Mykonos, and you have to go to these places because they are absolutely beautiful. But you're also going to go to places like Naxos and Marina and Spetsai. These are smaller ports. You're never going to go there with a larger vessel because they can't. They can't, they can't dock there for one, but if they do dock there, they're going to inundate the village uh, with too many people and it just won't be a, a quality experience. So this is the advantage of, of traveling with a luxury line like Seabourn. And, uh, you know, the other thing is where they dock and, and in certain ports of call, like in St. Petersburg, uh, the majority of the cruise ships will dock out in a, um, an industrial port facility. That's about 40 minutes from the main part of town in St. Petersburg on Seabourn, you're going to end up right next to the Hermitage, right in downtown St. Petersburg. Or we docked in Venice, uh, we docked right by the Doge's Palace in Venice and, uh, instead of, you know, out by the train station. And these are uh, advantages because you're right there, you're going to be able to get off the ship and just kind of wander around and, 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 and soak in uh, the town or city that you're in. And again, this is possible because of the size of the ship. Yeah, so true. And it's, um, I think the Mediterranean is a great example of that. Um, you know, what you said about um, uh, St. Petersburg, and the Hermitage is is so true. We dock right downtown in the in the, in the in, along the Neva River, steps from the Hermitage. So in the Mediterranean, you find this a lot as well. Probably 
when you look at a seaborne map, you, if you see a, a port that you're very familiar with and you think that's a big port, maybe you've been there. If you recall from your experiences of sailing there with the contemporary line, like Edward said, you've, you've taken that, you've docked in the main cruise ship port, you've taken that um, uh, shuttle into town. And then when you get into town, you often then walk past luxury yachts that have managed to dock in the town. In most cases, that's where Seabourn is docking. So you're getting, if it's a big port and you, are, you expect there to be, you know, several ships, you can expect that in those, in those situations, Seabourn's gonna take you right down to the heart of, of the city or, or right, right into the kind of the heart of that location. So there's that aspect. Um, Portofino is a great one for that. Portofino, um, if you've been to Portofino before, perhaps you've, um, you've, you've, you've docked and you've had to dock in Genoa or in, or in uh, Santa Margarita and then take the ferry across, which is kind of a 20, 25 minute ferry with Seabourn. We just slip in along with the yachts in that beautiful little nestled in that beautiful little bay of Portofino, which is to die for. So you've got that aspect. And as, as Edward, uh, you said at the beginning there, ports that you just don't see on, on, on other say, cruise lines itineraries. And, and these maps, by the way, you only are seeing a couple of maps here. I just picked a few just to demonstrate this because we could, spend all day here going through pages and pages of itineraries and there's so many but I just wanted to throw in a, a couple here just to give you an example of how seaborne itineraries are different when I speak with um, uh, travel advisor colleagues of mine um, and guests of seaborne I often ask them you know how did your client discover seaborne or, or how did you start sailing on seaborne and in many cases they say I saw an itinerary I didn't know what Seaborn was. I saw this itinerary. It looked like nothing else anyone was doing. So this is the what this is the way I wanted to sail. It looks so different. Um, and so this gives you it gives you it kind of demonstrates that. So ports that are different. We're winding the clock back in places like the Mediterranean, um, in places like uh, the Caribbean. We wind the clock back to give you a feel of uh, of, of a cruise or a cruise experience like folks were having thirty. 40 years ago, you know, when cruising was kind of in its infancy in these kind of exotic dens destinations and every port that you sailed to was yours and was serene and quiet and peaceful. And it felt like a very kind of uh, exclusive experience. You can see with our Caribbean sailings that th these, these ports, um, and, and I, I love teasing um, uh, travel advisor colleagues of mine who are very experienced and, 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 and again guests as well have sailed with Seaborn when I meet them out at events and uh, in venues where we hold our events um, I love to tease and show itineraries to some experienced cruisers who you know most of us cut our teeth with our cruise journey in the Caribbean and start in the Caribbean so most of these folks know the Caribbean inside out but I'll show them a Seaborn Caribbean map I'll say take a look at this can you name which island this 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 bay is? This name the name of this bay. You know, if you see Rodney Bay, uh, for example, or Cabrites, would you know instantly where whereabouts you're you're going to be docking? Which part of the Caribbean? We find these secluded bays. We'll do things like our caviar in the surf, um, uh, with our with our beach party, our beach barbecue, which is a way for us to create a luxury bubble. So you're not going into the port. We we kind of roll up with all the gear, lay out a wonderful beach barbecue, all the water toys, all the water sports. And then midway through that, uh, that day or that morning, we will sound a klaxon. Everyone looks up, trying to think what's going on. Is that, is that a boat drill? Is that fire drill? What's happening? And they see our jet skis uh, kind of speeding into the bay, towing a surfboard which is weighed down with caviar and champagne. And everyone wades out into the surf, grabs a glass of champagne and is served caviar directly off of the surfboard, not off the surfboard itself, obviously that, that caviar ice bucket, but served um, uh, caviar standing there in a beautiful secluded bay in the Caribbean or the Mediterranean. There's nothing like it. So uh, yeah, we create this luxury bubble where, where wherever we sail in that respect. So. We're going to switch gears a little bit as we kind of start to wrap things up and talk about Alaska quickly. As I mentioned, um, we have returned to Alaska after three years. And part of that return to Alaska was to reinvent the wheel because the size and um, uh, kind of nimble 
Um, of, of seaborne vessels have allowed us to de de deliver a, a Alaska experience, and not just Alaska, it's Alaska and British Columbia, um, unlike what you've seen before. So if you've sailed Alaska before, and you think, well, I've been there, done that, uh, take a look at these. I know a lot of folks, Alaska bookings for 2021 are, uh, are doing very, very well. And we've been, we've been finding very, uh, very much success over the past three years in Alaska. 2021 is doing very well. Lots of folks wanting to stay closer to home, we're finding, but do it differently, do something different. So Edward, I know, uh, you, you're gonna kind of take over from me here and talk, uh, talk a bit about Alaska. I know you've got an incredible amount of experience in Alaska um, that you can share. Um, what would you say are the, are the differences with, with Seaborn in Alaska? Well, I mean, you know, it's a good point in terms of just, you know, if you've been there before, you can still go to Alaska uh, with Seaborn because, you know, I've been there four times and people would say, well, why would you go more than once? It's just trees and mountains and stuff. But, you know, realistically, if you go to Alaska, the season runs from May to September. And, you know, each month sort of is, is its own little season, May and September. The early and late part is when you get a lot of wildlife activity. Uh, animals are either coming out of hibernation or going, getting ready to go back into hibernation. So, you know, you get a lot of activity there. In June, it's, it's kind of beautiful because the flowers, you can see the picture there, there's uh, flowers specific to Alaska and it's very colorful. July and August, uh, you get the calving of the glaciers. And so, you know, you're gonna see this is spectacular, uh, you know, occurrence when the ice breaks off the face of the glacier and it just makes this incredible sound. So, and then of course, you know, you get the salmon season. And if you're a fisherman, you wanna go in late July or August up to Alaska to go salmon fishing, but you're gonna to have to fight the bears because they're active as well at that time. They're not dumb. They know when the, the salmon are moving as well. So, um, you know, so there's different reasons to go to Alaska, uh, you know, during different time periods. But again, you know, the coastline, if you've looked at the map, it's kind of like Norway with lots of fjords, lots of, uh, crevices and a smaller vessel like the Seaborn Sojourn can get into these places. It can get into the smaller ports as well in Alaska, like Wrangell and Icy Strait Point. And these are, you know, again, tourism has expanded a lot. Some tourist destinations have become a little bit, uh, say, jaded by stores and shopping and stuff. But these are places that retain their allure and their intimacy. And they really give you a great idea of what Alaska is all about. So again, on Seaborn, you're gonna be able to do these sorts of uh, ventures. Uh, we've got the screen here, Glacier Bay National Park. Glacier Bay is a protected area and uh, only two cruise ships are allowed in Glacier Bay each day. And Seaborn is one of the few cruise lines that actually has passes into this park. Uh, and you will spend the full day of scenic cruising. There's wildlife, whales, seals, eagles. You'll cruise past a couple of glaciers during this day. It's a full day of scenic cruising. Uh, the other place Seaborn will uh, venture to that is a glacier field is Hubbard Glacier up in Yucatan Bay. Uh, the slide will occur later on, but basically Hubbard is the largest tidewater glacier in Alaska. And this is where you're going to see the real uh, spectacular calving of the face of the glacier. So again, you can experience both of these glacier areas on a Seaborn cruise, and you're going to get closer to the glaciers because the ship's a bit smaller and it can, uh, it can uh, get closer uh, from that standpoint. Um, I think we, we want to move on. Little, I thought we have a little uh, quiz you were going to do. Is that right? Oh yeah, um, we do have a quiz. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different uh, species of whales in Alaskan waters. Uh, so if you can go down to your chat box again, um, I want to, to ask you, how many species of whales are there in Alaskan waters? Uh, the hint, the number is between two and 10. So if you could type in what you think is the, uh, the number of uh, whales that are in Alaskan waters, um, the winner will get the $100 shipboard credit on their next seaborne cruise. Okay, and we do have the answer. Uh, right, the ready? answer there is we go. eight. So there's eight different species of whales that you can see in Alaskan waters. And believe me, um, we do whale watching tours in Juneau and we've, we've had tremendous success. People have gone on these tours and they actually guarantee that you will see whales on the tour. So uh, you definitely will experience this as part of your Alaska trip. 
Uh, Ronan uh, is the winner for that one. He's the one who answered correctly first, and I will message him privately to get his email address. Thanks, Ronan. Fantastic. Um, so again, with regards to the different itineraries, uh, there are standard seven day cruises between Vancouver and Juneau, as well as 10 and 11 night cruises uh, that you can uh, take uh, between Whittier and Vancouver. These are one way cruises. So you'd fly into Vancouver and you'd fly home from Anchorage, which is about an hour from the town of Whittier. Uh, the reason why you might wanna do this is, uh, is a longer journey of venture up into Alaska, the state where you might find some of the national parks like Kenai or Denali. Denali is the, the, the more popular of, of uh, all the national parks in the state of Alaska. This is where you're gonna see uh, Denali Mountain or formerly known as Mount McKinley, which is the largest mountain in uh, North America. And it's a spectacular, uh, it's a spectacular uh, day where you could spend in the park, uh, again, viewing wildlife, et cetera, et cetera, uh, on this journey. The ventures as well into Alaska, they are, st you're staying at lodges and hotels, rustic lodges or hotels. Uh, you're using the dome rail uh, train to, to transport yourself from place to place. It's all included in the package. Um, and it is a fantastic experience. And I hope you, uh, I hope you can uh, experience it yourself. Yeah, some some fantastic options there, and and this one is so so Alaska for 2022 will be available soon. We have 2021 available for 2022 will be available if you're dreaming of something a bit further out. Um, but I think all the maps we've we've shown just show how different um, these itineraries are in terms of being able to get into those narrow waterways and narrow channels where we'll be much deeper into that uh, into 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 those uh, kind of that, that coastline exploring the narrow channels of the coastline. Uh, much deeper than, say, regular Alaska cruises would be. Those regular ships will be 10 miles, you know, 15 kilometers, whatever that may be, further out into the Gulf, where we're, we're having that, that up close and personal experience from the ship. Uh, and um, as Edward said, there's glacier viewing experiences. The Ventures program plays a big part in Alaska. You've got the kayaks and the Zodiacs uh, are, are a big part of what um, what we have uh, as part of the program. Um, uh, these are those itineraries that are, you, you see for 2021. Speak with the, the, the cruise experts or merit travel team. They can give you um, uh, quotes and rates and fares for different types of suites and the different dates that are available. Um, but I'm going to share, um, a part. I don't normally share kind of photos from my own travel experiences in these. I'm not a fan of, you know, I don't want to bore anyone with kind of holiday snaps as it were, but I, I pulled up these photos because I think this just demonstrates that Ventures experience um, uh, perfectly. This was myself with well, hosting a small group on board the Seaburn Sojourn in Alaska um, just a year or so ago. And this is in Ian Islands up there across Sound in Ian Islands, which, which is uh, uh, an incredible place for wildlife because you've got this confluence of minerals in the water, um, which it, it attracts um, uh, seabirds, uh, stellar sea lions, um, whales, uh, sea otters, you name it. It's very, very rich. And But this, these photos, you can see, in fact, the stellar sea lion just bobbing up in that top left-hand corner. Um, the reason I wanted to share these is because you can see the ship in the distance. This demonstrates, again, the fact that you haven't had to go to a third party operator. We've just pulled into a, a, a kind of a very calm, secluded bay, put down the Zodiacs, put down the kayaks, and then we go out and explore. Um, it's just a fantastic way to have a different type of Alaska experience. Um, and the great thing about this is we're having that, that really personal uh, experience with our Ventures team guide there um, with us, seeing this kind of wildlife while those other cruise lines, as I say, are miles and miles back out in the Gulf, booking it at 20 knots to get to their three stops on their standard Alaska cruise. This is not a standard Alaska cruise. Um, our team on board are fitted with Swarovski binoculars, the best in the business for our guests to use on board. We have not only the Ventures program team, uh, Ventures team giving their work seminars and workshops, we have fantastic speakers that you can find on the Seaborne website. The cruise experts and merit travel team can look them up, find out who will be speaking on your particular sailing. Um, 
or you can just look at our speakers, all the different speakers, and find out when they'll, they'll be on board and plan your trip around that. We have household names in many cases. Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. Um, uh, Tim Rice, the Tim Rice, who I've already shown there, who um, is responsible for many of our shows on board. They're cruising as well as, as uh, presenting. In Alaska, uh, the same as everywhere else, we apply that regionally kind of sourced and inspired cuisine element. Um, and sure excursions, by the way, are not just the ventures. It's not just that we only have that ventures, Zodiacs and kayaks. We have all the regular shore excursions and shore experiences too, whether it be fishing um, that I know Edward mentioned or what we would call our, our, our regular shore experiences. This is a good example of some of those shore experiences um, from some of the ports to give you an idea of some of the things you could book. They're not included. These are paid. Uh, we find having paid um, shore excursions um, give us the ability to offer a much more diverse range and um, be more flexible when it comes to the type of uh, experiences we offer um, rather than being limited because we have to allow for so many comped um, excursions, which would be in the price anyway. If, if a cruise line offers them in inclusive, it's in the price, but it just means flexibility is limited. That's why we don't include them in the, in the fare. These are an example of some of those ventures, uh, those venture experiences. Um, so a big part of the program that I highly encourage you, once you get on board, go to those workshops, go to those sessions, you'll learn more about it, but it really does complete your experience. Now, before I wrap up, um, I just want to just touch on one small thing. Edward and I talked about this. We said, is this going to be too much information? Um, but we thought it's too good to uh, let you guys go without hearing about it. I talked about the regular Seaborne fleet or the classic Seaborne ships at the beginning, those five sisters. Um, around you know, two, 230 to 300 suites on board. We are in the process of building two purpose-built expedition vessels that are smaller, that still, they're still luxury, but they go further in terms of expedition. We really push the envelope there. The first one is coming out in late 2021. She's gonna be called the Seaborne Venture. And the reason we wanted to talk to you about this super quick is because of what you'll find on board. Uh, the ships have PC6 polar, polar class hulls. These are the ice strengthened hulls. They have not only the Zodiacs and the kayaks, they have e-bikes, uh, scuba diving, snorkeling. Um, they even have submarines, which I'll show you in just a second. But these ships can go further north and south than any um, cruise line in the, um, the ship in the parent company has ever gone before, further north and south. They can go 21 days autonomous off the grid without taking on food, water supplies, offloading anything. Um, they can hold their position on a dime through their propulsion system and their, their GPS systems. Um, there's an open bridge, so you can walk onto the bridge. It's at the discretion of the captain. If he has to do some serious navigation, he may close it off, but otherwise you can walk onto the bridge chat with the navigational officers, talk about the barometric pressure or look at the charts that day while enjoying a coffee with the, you know, the, the second officer or third officer or the captain who's ever on the bridge. And that's great, you know, for cruisers who love that kind of stuff like me. It's just such a wonderful touch. Um, the, the whole side of the ship, um, at the water line along the side of the ship, I should say, opens up in a shell door um, to embark things like the kayaks and the Zodiacs. So a very cool vessel. And there'll be two of those smaller, more geared toward expedition, pure expedition, but still with a wonderful luxury feel as well. So look out for those. If that's that's an itch you want to scratch, the expedition world, but you don't want to have to um, sacrifice your experience in terms of the surrounds and the feel, I highly recommend those. The, the first sailings, by the way, will be in, in uh, Northern Europe, the North Cape of Norway. Then we'll gradually move over to uh, the Canadian Arctic, you know, Iceland, Greenland, Canadian Arctic. Then we'll finish up in the Amazon into 2022. So... Um, if you're in that dreaming mode and you're looking at maybe getting something on the books for 2021 or 2022, um, next week, we've got a Black Friday sale starts actually on Monday where there's some, some great benefits to be had. If you're thinking about locking something in with your cruise experts, travel, um, uh, advisor or merit travel advisor, extra shipboard credits, reduced deposits, which are refundable, um, speak with the team. They'll have all the sailings that it applies to. And actually just for just for booking after this show, if you did want to book something in the next week, um, running through to November 26th from today, there's extra shipboard credit as well. Um, but that's not the only reason to, of course, work with Merit Travel and Cruise Experts, not just the fact they've got all these great deals at their fingertips and they do source deals with Seaborne and our other cruise 
uh, the other cruise brands that are out there, they're not just able to source deals uh, and offers for you because they have a they have an economy of scale that you don't have. Basically, they can leverage group blocks. Essentially, it doesn't mean you're sailing with any anyone in a particular group, but they have so many beds that are secured across and rooms secured across all those cruise lines. It allows us to pass on lower rates in many cases and extra amenities to them to pass on to you. So they've always got, they've always got the best deal, but the most important reason I think that, you know, better than working with Seaborne directly, instead of booking with Seaborne directly, definitely make sure you book it through Merit Travel or Cruise Experts Travel. But one of the most important reasons to, to work with, with uh, Merit Travel and Cruise Experts is their know-how and the fact that they're a phone call and an email away. If, you know, we've seen it happen earlier this year where there are situations where people missed flights or flights were canceled, that can happen even in a normal world, you know, down the road next year, year after, and you know you've they've got your back and they're there for you. They're, they're your advocate, um, and they are phone call or an email away, and they can they'll be there to take care of you, and they can give you those extras, and uh, they're just they are the the experts in their field. So I highly recommend working with them in that case. So that's that's it from me. Uh, do we have qu any questions we want to um, try and answer that came yes. in? Yep, there's definitely questions. So I'm just going to take them in the order that they came. Um, a couple of people have asked about what are the single supplements and are there any specials for people who are traveling solo? Good question. So um, we don't have a, a, a kind of a lower single supplement as standard, but quite often throughout the year, you will see us with a, a solo traveler special. So you look out for those. Again, the cruise experts and merit travel uh, advisors can source them for you. So it may be, you know, one particular month, um, you know, in the spring, there's a solo traveler special. And that means we'll reduce the, the, the double um, fare, essentially the single supplement will reduce it to say only 25% or only 50%. So that's one aspect. But once you're on board, it's perfect for, for solo travelers because every night you'll be invited to a table where there are other, so in the dining room, where there are other solo travelers, um, um, with staff, officers, crew, entertainers, ventures team, the conversation speakers. So there's always a really, really kind of nice tight knit group of, of solo travelers on board. So yeah, look out for those deals. Do you still have the gentleman host uh, program? No, no, not, not, not with Seaboard. No, we don't. No. But, okay. Yeah. But the, 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 the entertainment staff on board essentially do fill, fill that role in many cases. They are out and about every day. Perfect. Yeah. No, there's definitely quite a few uh, departures that do have uh, special single supplement rates, as Tom mentioned. That Amazon cruise looks great, by the way. I think I want to do that next. <laughs> okay, yeah. next next question. Um, somebody has all said that they've hesitated due to the smaller ship size in respect to seasickness, because usually the smaller the ship, the more you feel the waves, especially in the Caribbean. Do your ships or do they have any kind of stabilizers? Is there anything to help? Somebody in the chat also mentioned that they often use the patch, which is something you put behind your ear and it lasts for three days. That's waterproof. Um, but what do you guys suggest? Yeah, I mean, I, I personally haven't felt that much of a difference from sailing on say, larger ships to, to the, the, the smaller ships like Seabourn because they're not super small we're not talking tiny we, you know for 600 guests or so it, it's it's still um uh enough of a the, the i guess the the length the beam of the ship is enough to cover enough waves where we're not being thrown about we do have stabilizers because ships are built with modern stabilizer technology and uh it's if seasickness is a significant issue for you obviously make sure you take your own precautions you know, find a plan that works for you because you can encounter that even on a large ship in the Caribbean any time of the year in, in almost any part of the world. You never know where you, you could feel, suddenly feel that motion, but it isn't something that is significantly different with a seaborne vessel compared to, say, a mega ship or, you know, a contemporary size line. Yeah, these vessels are designed for ocean crossing. Um, you know, the stability is just as good as any of the larger vessels. In fact, probably if you're if you're on a contemporary ship on the 12th or 13th level, uh, you know you're you're going to probably feel it a little bit more, despite the fact that the ship is larger, just because you're so high above the waterline, which you know leads to a little bit more swaying. So yeah, I think 
from a standard uh, perspective, this is not going to be any more or less, uh, you know, motion um, on this type of vessel. Uh, and this is the last question. So somebody's asked uh, about children. Are children the same cost as an adult? And what is like the age limit for that? Okay. Well, there, there is no age. Adult? A good, good question. Yeah, there is no, with Seaborn, there is no um, kind of age uh, restrictions. requirement restrictions. It's not like an adults only cruise line in that respect. Um, it more kind of that, that side of the question, I would say it, it, it's more to do with the length of the itinerary. So you will see more uh, children and younger cruisers sailing on a seven day cruise. Um, that, 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 that's kind of a phenomena that, you know, that you see that trend everywhere in the industry. So you'll see more young cruisers say in the Caribbean. Um, and when we know that we have a number, when we, when we see that those bookings, are, you know, way out, we know which cruises are going to have children on, we won't have hundreds um you know we might have you know a dozen or so if you so those who will have ch children on maybe you know up to about 20 or 30 in some cases at the height um we do we will then have um kind of kids program coordinators uh qualified coordinators come to the ship and run the programs around the ship we don't just have, we don't have a dedicated kids space though but we make an area in the card room and use that for their kind of activities during the day but in terms of the fares um there isn't generally a reduction based on age on the, it really comes to the third and fourth. If they're the one, if they're booked as the second guest in the room, if it's one parent and child, then they pay the full fare. If it's a, if it's a suite that has a third or fourth um, occupancy uh, available, um, so it's a quad or a triple, then that third and fourth rate is already reduced. So there will be some cases where their age will shift it to an even a, a lower fare from that point, but generally it's the third and fourth rates that are reduced to begin with. Um, but it can change per cruise. So the best thing, check with, find the sailing you like, and then check with the cruise experts or merit travel uh, advisor to get that, that pricing. Yeah, and I think the important thing here is that there isn't a lot of dedicated area for uh, kids and kids programs as you might expect on a, on a contemporary premium line so you know just know that if you're bringing children on board uh, that you know it's going to be more of a family type thing where you're you're spending more time together and not that they're going to be involved in programs that are run by counselors or what have you it, it is definitely more of a family uh, vacation and so um, Annabelle do we have any other questions or are we uh Nope, that's it. We're out. We're out of time, and we're out of questions. So, signing well, up. Well, listen. Thank I, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, we have gone a little bit over time, so I appreciate your uh, your sticking with us. Uh, the people that are still here. Uh, to anybody from the U.S., I want to say happy Thanksgiving to you next week. Uh, enjoy your turkey stuffing and anything else that you uh, have at your table. And uh, I want to thank Tom for joining us once again for taking time. His uh, schedule uh, just on his wonderful product, and it really is a fantastic cruise experience. Uh, I hope all of you get a chance to experience it uh, sometime in the future. Uh, again, keep in mind we have uh, we have a couple of presentations going on to, towards the end of the year, and you'll get details of that from 